It's Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. Welcome to The Bridge and Mutual Presents. I'm Jack Ward. I'm here somewhere close to Alpha Centauri, going a comfortable warp three, but we still have a little time. Space is huge, and what is truly limitless is my love for old-time radio. This week, on our look back through Mutual's past on the Mutual Broadcasting System, we're back to Wednesday Wonders Exploring Tomorrow. So come watch the Starfield for a while and appreciate our double feature, Telepathic, and time heals. Exploring tomorrow. And now here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr., There's the old saying that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, it isn't really power that corrupts, but immunity, immunity to punishment and control. And every fool with a little power wants to achieve that immunity. Usually it's held that like attracts like. The two individuals with the same great fundamental characteristic will be normally attracted to each other. You know, this isn't necessarily so. It may not be true. You may have two people who don't like each other, but are forced by the very nature of the fact that they have a unique characteristic to endure each other. Oh, just a little more. (laughs) Oh, Alan, isn't it beautiful the way it bubbles and bubbles? (laughs) Oh, Alan, let's have champagne every night on our honeymoon. You want to take a bath in it? I can arrange that, too. Oh, Alan, (laughs) really? Pink (laughs) champagne? Just as pink as you're blushing right now. Oh, Alan. What's the matter? Do you think Mr. and Mrs. Alan Carvel are going to live like the rest of the slobs? I tell you, baby... Alan. What's wrong, Alan? Nothing. Alan. You look so funny all of a sudden. Get off my back. Thank heaven I found you. Why haven't you been answering me these last few days? Do I have to check in with you everything I do, every place I go? Alan? No, it's all right. I'm I'm all right, Jeannie. Just just, just leave me alone for a minute, hmm? Get out of my mind, Laurie. Get out, I tell you. I'll talk to you later. You'll talk to me now. What are you doing with this child? What are you trying to hide from me? All right, all right. I'll get rid of her and then I can talk to you. Give me 20 or 30 minutes to take her home. I'll give you half an hour, that's all. And don't try to close up your mind and hide from me again. All right, all right, I say. Jeannie. Jeannie, it's all right. You went so white there all of a sudden. Alan, honey, are you sick? No, no, it's just one of those migraine headaches of mine. Honey, I, look, I, I'd better take you home. Oh, honey. No, it's all right. I, I just need some sleep, that's all. Come on, let's get your coat. Oh, you better not come in. That old landlady. Oh, that's okay. Good night, baby. Oh. Good night now. Mm-hmm. And and get lots of sleep. Take care of your poor head. Call me in the morning. That's a deal. Good night, honey. Good night, Alan. <laughs> What makes you do things like that, Ellen? You stuck with me every inch of the way, didn't you? How old is she? Sixteen? Seventeen. What's it to you? Oh, I have to be conscience for both of us. Thank you, sweet Lorraine. Who asked you to? You did, Ellen. You always have. All these things you do are challenges to me to set right. All your venom against a fate that made you one of the only two telepaths in the world is twisted against me, your only partner in this lonely land. You strike out at me because I'm like you. And because by the same chance that made us, I'm the stronger one. That's a lie. I can break loose from you any time. I... Let me go. I... I can't breathe. 
I won't hurt you, Alan. I could never hurt you. Though I thank whoever or whatever is responsible for making us as we are, that it's me, not you, who has the additional power to reach out and move physical objects with my mind. You would. You waste something like that and then feel good about it. What I could do with something like that. Why don't you leave me alone? Because I love you, Alan. If you'd been a man with decent instincts, bound as we are together, we could have married and found what little happiness is possible for two like us in this world. But there's a twisted streak in you that wouldn't let you settle for that. Go ahead, play the little mother. You're no good for anything else. You didn't think so once, Alan. You're over the hill, baby. Face it. I've faced it, Alan. Have you... What do you mean? Can't you see you're getting worse? When we were just children together, before we'd even seen each other face to face, we used to talk to each other at night, clear across the city, mind to mind, about how someday we'd go out and find others like us. But if you had the chance to find someone like us now, you wouldn't take it. You don't want others. You want to be the only one. Why not? Why not? You've got a gun in your pocket right now. Don't you see the danger in all that? Don't you know what it can do to you? Don't try to scare me, Laura. I'm not trying to scare you, Alan. A telepath living in a world of non-telepaths is not a normal person. He can't be. He has to walk a chalk line all the time to preserve his sanity. He can't afford inner conflicts or emotional violences or shocks. What do you plan to do with that girl? What's the gun for? And what's that you're trying to hide right now, right under the surface of your mind there? All right. You want to know, I'll tell you. I'm getting out. I'm getting away from this city and away from you, and that girl goes with me. I'm going to take what I want, anything I want, and live like I deserve to, and you can't stop me. Alan! Alan, answer me! Don't shut yourself off from me like that! Alan! Alan! <laughs> Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. This is Bill Goodwin. You know, someone once said humor is the true democracy. And that's why we Americans can smile when we tell the stories of the legendary heroes who helped to build our country's great institutions and industries. Like Bullegg Bill, hero of the tuna fishing industry. Back in Provincetown, Massachusetts, they claimed that when it came to hauling in the horse mackerel, as the Eastern is called tuna, Bill could handle two gaffs at once and catch more than any six men put together. And they're still talking about the time Bill caught old Slick Britches, the biggest horse mackerel of them all. No one could ever get his hooks into Slick Britches, who weighed 2,000 pounds and had a tail six feet long. But Bowleg Bill promised to land him single-handed. He set out in his boat, toss-up, and when he spotted Slick Britches, he made a grab for him. But the tuna slipped through his hands. So Bill dove over the side, and before folks knew what had happened, Bill was sitting astride old Slick Britches, who was bucking like a bronco. He leaped almost a mile out of the water, but Bill hung on. All over the harbor they went, jumping and leaping, but still Bill hung on. Finally, Slick Riches gave one last leap over the toss-up and then calmed down all the fight gone out of him. Bill steered him toward shore, but all of a sudden he headed him back out to sea, slapped the tuna's tail and jumped off. The folks were mighty disappointed when Slick Riches disappeared, but it was like Bill told them. There's nothing that'll break a cowhand's heart so quick as to find a critter with a rough all rode off at the first mount. Yes, sir, it is a democracy which lets us tell the stories of such a legendary character as Bowleg Bill with a twinkle in our eyes and a chuckle in our throats. And so long as we continue to laugh together as a people, ladies and gentlemen, we will live together as a nation. Telepathy has long seemed like a wonderful thing to have, a wonderful possession. But have you ever considered it in terms of the absolute end of privacy? You know, explorers have found that if you put two men in one little cabin isolated far away from the rest of the world, they don't learn to like each other. They learn to hate each other. Now, Sue? Did I wake you, honey? Well... Oh, I, I thought she was going to watch the Late Late Show on Channel 2. Well, it's just a little past midnight. Oh, I'm sorry I woke you, honey. I just, just felt like phoning. Hmm? No, it's quiet as a church. Been through the plant and the tool shop four times already. I'm just going to check the officers and... Oh, now, come on. Now, stop worrying. Nobody knows about these night payroll deliveries. 
Anyway, they've come and gone. The money's already in the safe. Sure. Sure, I will. What? That's a gun you feel in your back. You say goodbye and hang up fast. And don't sit around. Uh, no, no, no. It's, uh, it's, it's all right. I, I, I just remembered I forgot to ring in, and I'll better hurry and do that right now. I'll call you back later. Uh, goodbye. All right, let's head for that safe over there. Now move. Don't worry. I, I have a healthy respect for guns. It is, there it is over there. I, I don't know what good's going to do. I, I ain't got the combination. Shut up. I'll stand over there where I can watch you. Hey, you opened it right up. Who told you the combination? The president of the company. Are you kidding? What is this, a gag of some kind? Look, if this is just a joke, mister. No. I didn't make... Think about jumping me, will you? Rob? Rob? Slob, that's all he was, a slob. Oh, Alan, please tell me what this is all about. You go home with a migraine headache, and then you, you call up and get me out in the middle of the night, and you keep drinking, but you won't tell me what's the matter. What's the matter? <laughs> that's a funny one. Come here. Come here. Come close. I'm going to tell you something. Alan, you're hurting my arm. Listen to me. You want to know something? You know how trees think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They think real long and slow and peaceful, and sometimes they take all winter just to think one, one little thought. Trees? Mm-hmm. Thinking? Oh, it isn't real thinking. It's just living, you know? You hear them living calm and quiet and uh, slow. And, and cats. Listen to me, baby. You know how cats think? I... I... No. Well, cats think sort of S-shaped, like a snake crawling. And dogs, you know, dogs are all excited. Up and down, you know, like a pogo stick. <laughs> Even when they're dreaming. Everything thinks. Do you know that, Jamie? Everything. All day long. Forever. Never. Everything goes around thinking. As long as they live, and when they die. Alan, are you cold? Let hmm? me hold you. Oh, you're shivering like crazy. Give me a drink. Hmm? Sweetheart, you've had enough. I want a drink, I said. Here, give me yours. You're not touching it anyway. Alan, I really think you shouldn't ah, be... Look, I've got a better idea. I'll tell you what, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of this town tonight, and we'll go far away where she can't ever find us. Uh... We'll take my car and we'll head south. Right now. We can buy what we need as we go. We can get married on the way. What do you say, Jeannie? Well, I'm not... You love me. Don't you love me, baby? You, you said you'd always do anything I ever wanted. Well, this is what I want. Get out tonight. And don't worry about money. I got lots of it. You have? Sure. Where did you get a lot of money all of a sudden? I'll tell you when we're on the road, okay? Well, answer me. Or do I leave you behind here? Alan, you, you wouldn't go off and leave me. Well, of course not, honey. But I gotta go. There's, there's no two choices about it. And I gotta go now. Now you're coming with me, or aren't you? One of the worst things about a conscience is that the darn thing is always going with you wherever you are. Alan had something other than a conscience. And running away didn't do much good. You know, telepathy has no distance limitations. Alan. Alan. What? It's starting to get light. Alan, you never did tell me where you got the money. Not now. Not now. Can't you see I'm out of my feet? Well, we could stop and get a couple of hotel rooms somewhere. No, we've got to keep driving. But we're nearly a hundred miles out of town already. You, you keep saying we've got to keep driving, but... I don't know why we couldn't stop for just a few hours. Oh, shut up, will you? Alan. You don't like it? Get out and take a bus back. Who needs... I don't know what's wrong with you. You never used to be like this. Then last night... Well, just shut up! Alan. Uh, what? Nothing, nothing. Alan. I'm not turning back. Yes, you are, Alan. This time you're turning back even if I have to make you... Make me then. Alan, you're slowing down. She's making me. She's making me. Well, Alan. Talk out loud. You look in pretty bad shape. Give me a cigarette. 
There's some on the desk. I'm glad you came right back here when I turned you around. Chose there's some hope. Oh, cut it out. What did you stop me for? That watchman. It was you, Alan, wasn't it? What watchman? Alan. All right, all right. Yes, it was me. He was a slob, so he's dead. So what? The gun you beat him to death with is in your pocket right this minute. So what? So I'm going to have to make you go to the police and show them the gun and tell them. You can't do that by remote control. You'd have to go with me. I'll go with you. And what will you tell them about how you happen to know all this? How about that? I will tell them. What about us? About me and you? About you? I don't want to. Are you crazy? You know what that would mean? You think they believe you? And if they did, do you know what it'd be for the rest of your life? You'd be owned, Laurie. Owned. Guarded and locked away by them. The slobs, like a piece of machinery, made to do what they wanted you to do for them. You'd never be free again. All I ever wanted was what any woman wants. The chance to lead a normal life. Look at me, Alan. I'm not bad looking. I never was. But the only man I could ever have been a normal wife to was you. And you never grew up. You've been a selfish little boy all your life, and I, I've paid for it. Why didn't you leave me alone? Just leave me alone. Leave you alone? Do you think you ever really wanted me to leave you alone? I was forced to love you the same way the only woman in the world would be forced to love the only man in the world. Well, now it's too late. I can't let you kill again. Then do it. Go ahead. Handcuff me with that mind of yours. Take me to the cops. Make them believe you. Do you think that'll stop me? Do you think there's any jail that can hold me? Any guards that can keep me? Go ahead. You're the only force in this world that can chain me, and you can't watch me 24 hours a day. You've got to sleep sometimes and... Laurie. Laurie, you're choking. Yes. You would break loose, wouldn't you, Alan? You would kill again, in spite of all I could do to stop you. All right, you can breathe now. No. Don't look at me like that. I'm not going to kill you. Even now, I can't do that. That gun of yours is in your inside pocket. Lift your right hand, Alan. Put it inside your coat. Now, take out the gun. Don't try to fight my will, Alan. You know it's no use. Now, you will point it at me. No. No, Laurie, not you. Anyone but you. Not you, Laurie, not you. Alan? Alan? Alan, it's me, Jeannie. Darling, can't you hear me? Jeannie. Sweetheart, just try to move your finger. Or your eyes. Just just move your eyes a little so I'll know you'll hear me. Jeannie, I can't move. I can't do anything. Help me. It's like being buried alive. I'm paralyzed. Help me. Lori. Lori, come back and help me. Lori. Lori. So, Alan had his wish fulfilled. Alan wanted immunity from the uh, consequences of his actions. There's only one way to achieve it, and he achieved it. If you do nothing, if you have no actions, whatever, then you have immunity from consequences. And that's the only way. Otherwise, you're responsible for what you do, whether you like it or not. Exploring to 
tomorrow. And now here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, the editor of Astounding Science Fiction Magazine, John Campbell, Jr., we all believe pretty solidly that sooner or later, almost any problem you name is going to be solved. So, uh, apparently all you'd have to do is just sort of stand by and if you could wait, uh, it would be solved for you. I, I don't think that works right. There's another thing to consider. Exploring Tomorrow is presented by the Mutual Broadcasting System in cooperation with l and M. Today's most exciting cigarette. l and smokes cleaner, tastes best. Live modern. Smoke modern l and The Kraft Foods Company, makers of delicious new Kraft jellies and preserves. And Cape Coral, a beautiful waterfront wonderland on the western coast of Florida. In a moment, John Campbell returns with the story of Time Heals. If you're like most couples, you want the retirement years to be as rewarding as any in your lives. Years to do all the things you put off while the children were growing up. Well, those years can be rewarding if you start saving now. And the simplest way to save is by joining the payroll savings plan. Here's how it works. First, decide how much you want to put aside each week. Then, this amount is automatically set aside from your paycheck each payday and put into United States savings bonds. Today, Series E bonds are better than ever because the interest rate is higher, three and a quarter percent, and because the maturity is under nine years. Now you can get more faster. So make sure your retirement years are happy ones. Join the payroll savings plan where you work today. This message is brought to you as a public service. <laughs> have trouble when it's cold. Uh, of course, they grow warm fur. Human beings have got around the problem of having to grow that fur and not being able to get rid of it in the hot weather by using clothes instead. Now, that solved that problem very neatly. Of course, it did bring in the different problem of having to make clothes and having to figure out ways of raising cotton or wool. You know, when you do solve a problem... Sometimes it involves setting up a complex thing to make the solution, and that may be a tougher problem than the problem you started with. Let's consider a fellow who uh, tries walking out, out of time, when he has a problem. Our last night together. Oh, I don't know, Dorothy, not necessarily. I might come out of that time field a year from now. Well, 50 years from now, when I'm old and tired and ugly... And you'll still be young. No, I think I'd rather you waited at least a century. The traditional period in Elf Hill, I believe. But, Jim. Jim, let's stop pretending to be so calm and gallant. There are only the two of us here. Let's, let's just curse our luck for the vile thing it is. There's also the champagne here. Mustn't shock the champagne. I'll open the next bottle. Oh, do you have to be flipped every minute, even now? Tomorrow you won't be Jim Hart, bright young advertising executive, wit Wolf, an idol of Manhattan's more high-priced intelligentsia. Tomorrow you'll be frozen in a block of frozen time. Can't you let down the mask just for tonight? But you see, my dear, there is no mask. This is me. I dare not admit anything else. I'll get that champagne. Oh, forget my uh, my choice of music. Childish, perhaps, under the circumstances, but I'm entitled to a little melodrama, am I not? After all, this is literally a life and death proposition for me. The crypt is right at the end of this corridor, Mr. Hart. Pretty far underground, aren't we, Doctor? Yes, besides being way off upstate. It's in case of, oh, atomic bombs, rising sea level, whatever might happen. After all, this place may have to last for a century. Um, what's your trouble again, Mr. Hart? Inoperable cancer. My family physician said I'd be dead within a year, unless a cure can be found. And that, of course, is what the crypt is for. Someday a cure will be found. 
Until then, you will lie here, snug, safe, unchanging, not even conscious of time passing in the outside world. Time heals all wounds, they say. And time is what we have the most of here. Ah, this is it. Just step up on that platform between those field coils. I'll flip a switch, and the next thing you know, you'll be in the future. Good enough. Uh, uh, say, uh, well, I mean, Mr. Hart, I was wondering if you have any last messages or... No. No, I said all my goodbyes yesterday, such as they were. I've had the sense to keep myself legally and emotionally unattached. Well, that should certainly give you an advantage over most of our patients up there in the future. Whatever the future is like. Good luck, Mr. Hart. Thanks. But we needn't be so theatrical. You may need luck more than I, Doctor. Mm. Here goes, then. Goodbye. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. Hello, everybody. This is Bill Stern, and I'd like to tell you about a tropical paradise where living is so easy that I intend to settle down and stay there for the rest of my life. The name of my dream city is Cape Coral on the unspoiled western coast of Florida. Just picture 2,000 acres of high dry pine and palm land honeycombed with 50 miles of navigable waterways just teeming with fish they write books about. Boating and fishing facilities, private country club and yacht anchorage, a planned 18-hole golf course, tennis courts, and many other luxuries. You can buy a large 80 by 125-foot home site for only $990, only $20 down and $20 a month, and live here like a king on a retirement budget, or purchase now for possible profitable resale later. The complete Cape Coral story has been compiled for you in easy-to-read literature. It's yours free of charge. A postcard is all you need. Send it to me, Bill Stern. So long for now. I'll be seeing you at Cape Coral, Florida. To get your free literature, write Bill Stern, Cape Coral, Post Office Box 230, New York 18, New York. It's certainly a reasonable proposition. If a man can just step outside of time and wait, uh, sooner or later they're going to develop methods to handle the problems that are facing him at the time. Uh, they will develop cures. The advance of civilization is sure to lead to a cure of the particular problem man has. That's a simple proposition, isn't it? <laughs> All right, no. Do can do step. I reckon. What? What? But it's gone. The doctor. Do understand me? The crypt is changed. Half empty. Crumbled plaster. Old. And those two men down by the controls, what? Why, they look half oriental. They're wearing kilts. The future. What year is this? Oh, Almeric Waldo. Yeah. What year is this? What year is this? Ah, Tob Hart. You are Tob James Hart, are you not? It so says on the record. Yes, 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 I'm James Hart. Hey, and you? you... I called... I am... am called... Uh, Hallam Rostum Dougal. My kitman here, I, uh, I mean, he is called Walder Rostum Chang. We both belong to the Rostum Kith. Do you understand? No, no, I don't. Be calm. It are a shock, I know. Here, here, lean on my arm. I never expected so suddenly. What year is it? 2837. What? 900 years. Yes. There were dark ages and upheavals. And then during interplanetary era, the... Mechanoclastic government did not wish. Ah, but be assured, Top Heart, we are friends. Can you cure me? Oh, yes. We have a quick and easy cure for your disease. A synthetic virus which attacks only cancer cells. A month or two in the hospital, and you will be well again. <sighs> well, uh, that's good to know. That was the whole reason for my junket, after all. Nine hundred years. <laughs> I suggest we all go up to the surface now. The clinic is nearby. All right. All right. 
Say, uh, how, how do you happen to speak my language and your friend here doesn't? Not your wise. Language changes in 900 years. Walder asked I should come interpret until you have learned modern speech. I am a linguist at Interkith Treaty Foundation. Most especially, I have studied the old American language. Old American... Good morning, Tofat. I am your new nurse. Well, hello there. Ah, Tofat. I didn't know that you'd already learned the present-day language. Oh, I've had several weeks with nothing else to do. Sheer desperation drove me to study it. You must relax to get well. You know, good sir. I'm sure. Sure. Sunshine, fresh air, books, music, that's it. That's all I've seen. You don't even show television programs. It was decided by the Philosophic Treaty 100 years ago that the unity of the family and hence the kith was impaired by external entertainment. Mm, I've heard that sort of thing a million times. I'm sick of it. I can't even get a smoke in this dump. Smoke? Uh, tobacco, nicotine. Puff, 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 puff. Oh, oh. A chemipotent aerosol. No, I'm afraid, sir, that the biotech machine has not prescribed it for your case. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Well, at least you're a new face around here and a remarkably uh, pretty one. What's your name? I can't see that that's relevant, sir. Of course it is. My public name is Sarah Olaf Brunard. Well, don't be so stiff and formal. Come over here, sit down. I won't bite. Not very hard, anyway. <laughs> You're convalescing fast, I see. Oh, sure, sure. I'm practically a new man. Emphasis on man. Girl like you reminds me of that acutely. I'm afraid I don't understand. Your usage is semantically empty. Mm, boy. Look, darling. Look, I want to get better acquainted. That's all. I'm, I'm, I'm lonesome. I shall consult the psychotechnic files, and if there's anyone registered with a compatible individuality... I will ask him to come discuss with you. Discuss with me? Well, thanks. That'll be just great. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. This, my friends, is the modern sound in music. Swing turned into bop and bop turned into progressive jazz. Like into that left modern flavor. Left modern with the big red L-M-M. L and M. Best taste in smoke you'll ever find. Made from the Southland's finest cigarette tobaccos. And you get that full, rich flavor coming at you through the miracle tip. Pure white inside, pure white outside. The patented filter. The patent number on every pack guarantees a more effective filter. On today's L&M. L&M smokes cleaner. Tastes best. Light into that L&M flavor. You're really living when you do. Yes, it's a simple proposition that if you just wait around, they'll find a cure for your problem. The trouble with the proposition is that it's a little too simple. The other half of the proposition is they'll find other things, too. They'll find other problems to work on. And they won't be interested in the type of problems you've been used to. Ah, Tobe Hart. It is a pleasure to see you well again. Please honor me by accepting a seat. Well, thanks, but uh, you wouldn't have anything I could really sit on, would you? I mean... Hmm? I can't get used to this hard, low-legged stuff you call furniture nowadays. Oh, my apologies, sir. I imagine one does need a lifetime to become habituated to a complex of postures. Oh, oh well, forget it. It's a nice place you've got, uh, Tob Allen. Oh, pardon me, sir. One friendly word of advice. It is considered rude to compliment a man on his home. Well, that's why I've come to you, Mr. Uh, Tob Allen. Look, you've studied the history of my own period. You may be able to help me. 
The rest, oh, they're, they're very polite, but I'm frozen out. I just don't fit in. Everything I do seems to offend somebody, somehow. You feel yourself isolated. Well, I, I, I made my own way in the, in the 20th century. I had friends. At least I knew a lot of people. I knew my way around. I was well-to-do. Here I'm, I'm living on a pension out of the charity fund. I'm not invited anywhere because I don't know how to behave. Your conversations, your ceremonies bore me stiff anyway. It, it was politely explained to me that I... I haven't a good enough heredity for any kids to consider me as a marriage prospect. What, 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 what did you take me out of the crypt for? Why did you kill me if I'm to hang around here doing nothing for the rest of my life? Oh, please, please, Tobhart, relax. I beg you. Well, give me something to do. Just give me something to do. I'll prove myself. I can, I can start with some simple job, work my way up, study, learn. I'll show you what I can do. You just give me a chance. <laughs> crew of a weather station on the Greenland ice cap. Supply rocket once a month and I give them all my reports. They try to make conversation. But what is there to talk about? All the snow I've been looking at. What the beautiful aurora up there in the night sky. The half a year night sky. Oh, sure. I'm sure they would discuss the aurora according to the soundest aesthetic semantics. <laughs> Shut up, shut up, you black in the chair. But... The dead. He stopped. Did he hear me? How much do all the machines in this place do, anyway? How much do they know? I'm one little man among a thousand machines... I tell what they're thinking in those steel brain cases. All I can do is copy numbers off their dials onto a printed form and... Well, why isn't there a machine to do that, too? Why am I here at all? Charity, sure, make work. Where's that bottle? Well, at least they have the decency to leave me some bottles. Yeah, yeah, I know I left it here. Well... Why quit anyhow? Here's a snug home. A ample food, books, plenty to read. Plenty to drink. Man, I got a maid. There's even a pretty good ten hours of tape here somewhere. Mm, that's me. Ten hours of Only no green leaves will ever spring out of me. I don't see it in German. Sure. Dead language. English is a dead language, too. I'm a dead language. Well, that's the way the civilization crumbles. Drink up, Dorothy. Here's to us. <laughs> Obviously, some mental breakdown. Nobody seems to know just what. I think it's called a catatonic state. I don't know. He's insane, at least. The biotech at the Greenland station asked me to bring him back since I knew him best. This sort of thing isn't understood anymore. For better than a century, we've had a well-adjusted civilization. People simply don't go insane. At least not in this rather horrible fashion. And so no one um, has any idea how to treat it. Exactly. Oh, we could try various chemicals and whatever else occurred to us. But we would be working blindly with a grave risk of damaging his brain beyond repair. 
So we are putting him back in the crypt. Yes. The next cycle of civilization. A thousand years from now, ten thousand, a hundred thousand years. They will know how to cure James Rod. But will he feel any more at home with them than with us? Less, I should think. So he may break down again. So badly that even they can't cure him at that time. Then they will have to put him back in the crypt. God help him. God help us all. John Campbell returns in just a moment. Remember how Grandma used to boil jellies and preserves on the stove in the kitchen? Mmm, what a wonderful aroma. But you know that wonderful aroma was really flavor boiling away. And lots of folks still boil flavor away when they're making jellies and preserves. Not Kraft. Kraft jellies and preserves are cool cooked at temperatures way below boiling to keep the flavor many others boil away. That's why Kraft jellies and preserves have that true fresh-picked flavor a flavor you can add to your favorite foods. There are so many ways to use these fresh, delicious flavors, such as a mouth-watering strawberry coffee cake. It tells you how in the free recipe folder. Flavor magic for your favorite foods with Kraft Jellies and Preserves. Just write to Kraft Jellies and Preserves, Box 5310, Chicago 77, Illinois. Box 5310, Chicago 77. Do it now before you forget. And be sure to get Kraft Jellies and Preserves. Exploring Tomorrow was presented by the Mutual Broadcasting System in cooperation with L&M, today's most exciting cigarette. L&M smokes cleaner, tastes best. Live modern. Smoke modern L&M. The Kraft Foods Company, makers of delicious new Kraft Jellies and Preserves. And Cape Coral a beautiful waterfront wonderland on the western coast of Florida. Yes, as time goes by, things do change, but the fundamental things apply. And the most fundamental of all, really, is you can't walk out on a problem and just let it take care of itself. By the time it gets taken care of, it's ready to take care of you, but good. Join us each Wednesday and Friday night for a fascinating adventure in Exploring Tomorrow. Heard in our cast tonight were Lawson Zerby, Connie Lembeck, and Sam Gray. Script was by Paul Anderson. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. This is Mutual, the world's largest network. And that's this week's Mutual Presents feature. The Mutual Audio Network brings the best of old-time radio and modern audio theater to the world. Be sure to subscribe through the Mutual Audio Network podcast feed, any of our podcast days, or the Mutual YouTube channel, which includes MadCon and many other extra features and shows. See you all next time at Mutual Presents. Good night. Now, you seem to me to be a connoisseur of the best of radio drama. In which case, make sure you're subscribed to the Monday Matinee Feed. There we have our weekly series of dramatic, theatrical, classic, eclectic, and live radio drama. So yeah, either the main Mutual Audio Network feed for all types and genres of audio drama, or the Monday Matinee. And we'll see you there. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together. 